Hey guys, it's Avril Angel. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at uh, an add-on that's not exactly new, but one that some of you may have looked at and perhaps overlooked. Now this is the Romantic Wings Legendary Aircraft Pack 1. It first came out on 9th of March 2022. It has just hit the marketplace, so some of you might be interested. Now for £10 on the marketplace, yeah £10, and this costs 18 currently from Just Flight, so heads up there. For £10, you get three aircraft. You get the Zero, or is it here? The uh, A6M50, the A6M5 in a kamikaze version. It's basically the same thing with the pilot with the headband. And you get the A6MN, the roof uh, seaplane, or the roof A seaplane. Not sure how to pronounce that one. But you do also get a whole ton of scenery too. Now, Ten pounds for an aeroplane, it's whatever. It's not expensive. I'd expect it to be okay. But for three, that's a bargain. But when you also then add in, and I did overlook this admittedly first time around, you then add in a bunch of scenery as well. Period style Japanese scenery, in fact, of uh, the islands just out here south of uh, Japan. This is, I believe, the island of, I'm trying to find the name of it here. Suonosejima. Suonosejima is the volcanic island. Now, you get several water runways. You get several aircraft carriers. The Shinao. You get the Akagi. You get the Kaga. And we have a seaplane tender. The uh, Kamikawa Maru as well, too. So, including an extra airport and a crash zero on an island. There's a Japanese military installation here if you want to go flying for American carriers and do some uh, recon missions, for example. So, plenty of options, actually, weirdly enough, if you want to get some things out of this that don't involve the plane. Now, I will say, visually not the most dramatically exciting, probably FSX vintage in terms of its texturing and modelling appearance. It's... I, I want to be kind, I want to be polite, but it's not great. Now, the actual detail of things like the scenery is fantastic this airport is amazing I, I actually really really quite like it you get a sloped runway here look at all these ships off the coast here the carriers we'll look at those in a second a sloped runway appropriate buildings vehicles the whole place looks like it could have existed at the time which would be cool for doing some photo reconnaissance work with some of our aircraft we have available to us in the sim so potential to be quite exciting although i'm pretty sure that container and that forklift are not period appropriate, but hey, I can I can forgive that. Uh, let's pop inside and take a look. The aircraft itself, again, we're talking FSX quality, but for a tenor, I can forgive a lot. So inside, we've got a canopy that will open. This button here will enable a pair of GPSs, which make it pretty user friendly. Admittedly, you've got some options here for controls. If you wanted to fly a zero, it's the only one that's really available, so it would make sense. So we have our drop tanks down there, throttles, mixture prop. We have cabin air we have the oil coolers down here gear and flap indicators mags starters etc etc lighting is down there nice and simple it's not a hugely complicated aircraft although apparently i'm sat behind the pilot seat where it's invisible so if i just move forward there's a headrest there wonderful we're in a perfect spot so default viewpoint is a little bit far back as our flaps that is our landing gear it does set us a little bit behind the seat but it makes it more visible i suppose we're going to start it up, so battery's on, gear is selected down, if you want it came on automatically. Uh, we'll do the mags to on, make sure our equipment here is set as it should be. There's no complexity to start up for this aircraft, it is basically on off, but again, I'm not expecting a huge craziness level of simulation. It'd be nice to get a really detailed uh, zero, uh, but I can live with this. The sounds are not great. It, it sounds like a tractor made of Lego. I'll be honest. And uh, closing the canopy doesn't improve things much, of course. The prop disc, not fantastic either. We'll take it for a quick spin. I want to fly the seaplane version and see just how that actually behaves in the water. Because that would be interesting to see if it's actually any good. Uh, yeah, it, it could do with the texture overwork. It really could. Um, I think the textures could save it a lot. Some of them aren't bad at all. Most of them are not great. Like, it could it could be saved quite a lot with a texture overhaul. 
The prop disc could certainly be made less awful. Um, but for the price of what you're getting here, it's kind of ridiculously cheap. So I want to give it a spin and see if it's any fun, that's for sure. But the sounds are pretty rough. Now, my personal perspective on this at this stage is that here you have an aircraft that, whilst not great, I consider it a scenery that comes with free aircraft. Okay, we'll lift and clear there. Let's get our nose trimmed up. Get around here. Gear attraction is nice and textbook there, of course. Turn my head tracking on, which is apparently something I forgot to do for this review, which is awkward. We'll go visit one of the carriers, but we'll try and land on one of them, actually. We have got our tail hook right here on the dash. So as soon as my head tracking is actually on, we'll go do that. Plus, you know, I prepare for things totally. There we go. So the actual uh, scenery down here is pretty nice. The airport itself is kind of cool. We'll go for the cloud. We'll get out of this. Yeah, the sounds are a major detractor for me. They're almost the actual... The thing that pushes things over the edge of it not being particularly usable. So the island itself is kind of cool. You've got the airfield down there. You've got a couple of little ports. You've got the rocks around the coastline. In terms of giving you a whole island of interesting stuff to see, I think this is definitely up there. I could definitely see myself doing some photo recon missions to here. Hey, it might be a good excuse to use the uh, XF-11, the Hughes. It'd be perfect for this, wouldn't it? Or taking a goose and doing a uh, downed uh, aviator rescue mission. Flying uh, a bomber out here, maybe, if we had a good one. It could certainly be uh, fun. How maneuverable is it as a zero? Yeah, slow roll rate, not sure how accurate. I can't comment, I've never flown a zero. I know the roll rate wasn't amazingly quick on them. And of course, uh, reasonable climb performance from what I know. And she definitely seems to have that. The rattling tractor's definitely kicking it for me. That's that's a big one. But this island is rather beautiful. I'll be honest. So if all I get for £10 is a rather beautiful island with some uh, period Japanese scenery and uh, ships and Japanese carriers. Actually, not terrible. Like, for £10, that's, that's not bad value. Love the volcanic uh, outflow there. But yeah, the aircraft, not wonderful, but uh, the tinted glass as well feels a little bit odd. But pull back this. It changes the undertone in 0% of the way. But at least there's a good view around here. So we'll come around, we'll find one of the carriers we'll put down on deck. And we'll go try out the uh, seaplane version. Because that one does interest me. And if that flies well on the water, there's a lot I could put up with. So there's one of the carriers out there. I'm pretty sure the stern is that to the left side. Yeah. The Japanese carriers have their islands forward. So that should be the stern. Okay. Yeah, with a big texture overhaul, this could be a reasonable plane. There's no system steps, of course. It's it definitely feels FSXy. Okay. Looking all right so far. Alright, let's lose some speed here. Yep, there's the island on the right hand side, so this is the stern we were aiming for here. We'll come out and round. Gear coming down. Watch the indicators there. Gear is confirmed down and locked. Flaps. Tail hook. Oh, it's the optic as well. That's interesting. The crosshair and the tail hook. 
No, she is, so flaps her down. Curve this approach in here. Is that a bow I'm coming out? I don't think it is the bow. I hope it's not the bow. No, the wire's on this end. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure the wires are on this end. Okay. Yeah, wires in sight. I hope it's traps. Well, no, we didn't trap, but we're about to go swimming. I'm pretty sure. Wee! Sploosh! Arguably, it could have gone better. <laughs> so it didn't trap. Should have worked out if it did that beforehand. Don't think I did. Oh, well. Seaplane time. Hey, we're already a seaplane. We're a plane in the sea. So here we are with the seaplane variant. Texture-wise, actually, the darker version does seem to look actually a bit better. Oh, there is pilot. Oh, buddy. You've seen better days, haven't you? You've seen some things. Oh man, he's he looks depressed. He also has no eyebrows at all. Look at the eyes. He has seen some things. That soul has, has been places. All right, enough of this. We're on a water runway, so the engine's running. It doesn't actually have the option not to, so it is what it is. Oh, that's cool. We've got the pilot's lady friend in the cockpit and the pilot's GPS units because we want those. Okay, let's give this thing a crack, shall we? So, I'm going to just advance this bottle to see how it behaves. It still sounds rough. I'm not touching my pitch. Okay, it's kicking the tail up there. I'm going to give the nose a little push. A little push forward so we're on the step. Okay, it's balancing fairly well. I'm going to just give it a pull back. Actually, not awful. I've flown worse seat float planes, to be fair. I've taken off in worse float planes. I've skipped around like an idiot. There is that. Canopy wise, otherwise identical to the land plane variant. Little stuttery, actually. I'm starting to experience stutters on the sim from this. Weirdly so. Which is weird because I'm at 70 FPS. Unusual. Well, we'll land out by the uh, ship down here and we'll see how things settle out for us. Obviously, this has no landing gear options, it is purely a seaplane. Okay, losing some speed now, dropping down. Losing altitude pretty rapidly. Okay, we'll just swing out this way a little bit. Let our speed roll back. We may need to circle around to land here just to burn off enough. This thing is dropping like a rock. Okay, the speed's coming down, give it a notch of flaps. Okay, rolling in. Second notch of flaps. Yeah, quite stuttery. Not sure why that is. I'll hold the nose a little bit here. Very responsive. Oh, little skip. Okay, it stays down a second time. Actually, not bad at all. Oh, hold the controls back. Hold the controls aft. That stopped very fast. Wow. That was surprisingly quick. So, it looks like water rudder is automatically down, or it doesn't have an actual physical disconnect between the water rudder. Yeah, so water is down there. It may be that it's permanently in the down position, which is plausible. Which means you have to be careful on takeoff and landing, because the water rudder will affect you, so don't touch the rudder when you are doing that. 
pull up here by uh, this freighter. I want to test it real quick. We'll just get some speed here, then I'm going to cut the mixture and let ourselves float for a second. Electronics all off. Somehow quite high friction because this is stopped almost straight away. So quite a high friction uh, with this aircraft, which must be why our landing run was so short as well. So unusual. Um, what do I think? Well, as a scenery pack with free aircraft, it's fantastic. The aircraft are really not that great. Um, respect where it's due to work goes into aircraft. But I, in the state of the current sim, I wouldn't think it would be fair to consider these worth it on their own. But with the inclusion of the scenery pack, I think this really is worth it because to fly from elsewhere to here does provide great opportunity for play in the sim environment. So we're down here south of japan itself the main islands here or the tail end of the main islands i should say so we're just down here in the trailing islands so we have one of the air force down here tokonoshima and we have well actually let's me zoom into the actual airport i wanted to click amani so there's plenty of areas around here you could do recommissions from if you want to do some overseas flights and hit some recon here i may do that in fact myself so I would see this as a scenery pack with free aircraft. In that regard, it is worth it. Otherwise, I would not say it is. Thank you for watching. Bye.